Hi everyone, it's Neve here. Welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing with altering some stenciled images to get a focal image on our page. I'm starting out my large Dina Week, not Dina Weekly, Dilesions journal, and I'm just putting down some collage in the background. So I'm keeping my background really neutral in this page. And I'm actually using glue instead of uh, gel medium because I couldn't find my gel medium, I'd run out. So <laughs> um, usually I would use gel medium to glue all this down um, just to make sure it's nice and flat. So I'm sort of overlaying and overlapping, which is something I often do when I'm collaging. It just helps to one, hold your pieces of paper down on your page, but also it um, helps sort of create a more seamless finish to the page. So once I've added in, I've got some old German text there, I've got an old will that I found in an estate sale and um, some dotty paper. I do have gel medium. I wonder why I started off doing weird. I, I do these things. So I had some um, collage, um, printed collage paper as well with some words on it which I added up to. So I've got lots of, sort of text in the background. To blend everything together, I'm just using a very, very thin coat of gesso over the top. So what that does is it um, gives everything the same sort of finish. So you can still see the text really easily through it, especially in a close-up. But by putting that little coat of gesso over the top, it just makes everything sort of blend together somewhat. So this is a stencil I'm going to be altering. And this is a stencil from... Lucy Campanew, um, Art Shed Angel, who was very lovely and sent me a sample of it to play with. Um, as you've probably seen on my channel recently, I've been loving those sort of larger focal imaged stencils and there's so much you can do with them. So I did something slightly unusual for me and the fact I used ink to um, put the stencil image through rather than paint. And I just used a little blending tool to, to blend that in. I use the archival ink, so it is permanent on my page. It's not going to spread, so I can add paint. I can put gel medium over the top and so on. I'm also doing something else slightly unusual for me is I'm actually using a pencil to sort of draw out the hairline. Usually I just go in and, and draw. But in this case, I actually decided that I would draw it out with pencil first. Um, the reason for that is I'm not very confident with hair really so um, I wanted to get a bit of an idea of where I wanted to go. Um, so now I'm just using a permanent marker to draw in my hair. I've been using a lot of permanent marker in my work at the moment. Um, this is an alcohol based marker. I got it from my local news agent so you know there's nothing special about it but I quite like it because it's um, very glossy and shiny when it dries. Uh, I don't know if it's got if it's oil based or something it can't be oil based if it's on alcohol ink but um, you can sort of see the shine on it so it gives it a little bit of a different texture to the black that I've got for the face and I'm just rubbing out the lines that I had drawn on my page now I'm going in with my white Posca paint pen and just outlining the hair so that allows me to give it a little bit of definition but also to add in some of those sort of strands that have overlapped and um, make the hair make a little bit more sense. It does still very much look like um, she's got a wig plonked on her head but that's okay it all adds to it. One of my things that I often do when I'm um, working with faces is to add in the whites of the eyes and to add in the colour of the iris. I'm also adding in some lips and again I'm just using um, paint pens to do that and then I'm going in with a another black pen and adding in some eyelashes. So just because you've got some images on your stencil doesn't mean you can add more to it. Um, you, you're not limited to what's on the stencil. You can use that as a basis to um, adapt and change and um, make your own as, as much as you want. So I'm going in with the neckline. You can see I'm sort of covering over where some of that stenciled image is because I wanted to draw in this sort of turtleneck top to get that pop of red in. So I've got a little bit of red on her lips and I've got the red down the bottom as well. I also thought this would be a good way to um, have a place to do some journaling as well. 
So after drying off my paint pan, I'm just going in again with the white to add some outline and details to it. I'm also going to put a little bit of black around it just to give the edges a little bit of definition. And then I'm going into the lips with the white, just adding in a few, you know, bits of reflection. I'm using a red Stabilo pencil as well to put in some um, eyeshadow because why wouldn't you want to have red eyeshadow? And putting a little bit of texture over the paint pen too. I find by putting colour pencil over it, it just gives, um, yeah, just a really interesting effect over the top. It gives a little bit of depth, gives a little bit of 3D. I, I quite like the how it works. I then decided to get a bit fancy with a fine black pen and try and put in some um, eyelashes, not eyelashes, sorry, eyebrows, um, just to make it sort of flow a little bit. And then I'm using my um, black Stabilo oil pencil to put a little bit of shadow around the edge of the face and um, then just blotting it out with water just so you get that sort of shadowed effect around the outside. Um, that helps to push it out from the background as well a little bit which is um, a really handy technique to have when you're doing stuff and want it to sort of sit out from the background. I also water activated the Stabilo Oil Pencil on her eyes just to blend them in a little bit together. Now I've sort of finished my image, I am got my phone out and I'm looking through Pinterest to find some quotes. And um, I chose to um, write on her neckline, I, those little black bits I thought were a great way to um, put a little bit of journaling on. And it also adds to the effect of um, giving giving some line detail to it. Um, I, I find when I'm, I write in that way on my journal pages, it's certainly it's readable, um, but you need to concentrate to read it. So it's a great way of not hidden journaling, but doing journaling that you I suppose don't want to be as obvious on your page than a big quote written above it which is what I'm about to do on this page as well. And then the close-up you'll see how you're able to read it um, but certainly from a distance it looks more like line work on the page um, than the quote up the top and you know when you look at this page the face will be the focal image this quote will be the focal image so that writing on the jumper sort of blends into the background somewhat. Now, as you can uh, see, see from the quote, uh, there is lots going on in my life and um, this sort of summed up how I was feeling about it all. And it was just um, a really great way to sort of have a reminder that, you know, never um, forget walking away from something to toxic brave, even if you stumble on the way out the door. It's, it's okay to not want to do something, but if you're still getting away from it, it's a good idea. I then decided, which I'm not 100% sure if I made the right decision with this, is to splatter some red over the top as well. So you do need to be careful if you're splattering red because sometimes it can look like blood splatter. Um, but that is my page. Really, really quick and easy and lots of fun to do. So I hope you have a go. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye for now.